Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a good break. Um, our last presentation uh, of the, the assembly is going to be led by Faith Offman, and it's on the Exploratory Committee. So if Faith is ready, we'll, get be we'll begin. Well, hello well, again. In, oh, did I not? Oh, they can't see me. Can you see me and hear me? Both, yes, see and hear. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, hello again, everyone. I'm Faith Offman. Um, I've been ministering here in Detroit for eight years as a member of the preaching team and creating additional Passionist programming as part of my responsibility as well. Coming to the Passionist have provide, the Passionist Charism has really provided for me a container, container for the yearning of my heart and my life experience, my life experience as a social worker, as a pastoral associate in a parish, and as a facilitator for Project Rachel. The Passionist Charism has given me a language and a framework for what has been deep inside of me, what I instinctively knew. It's given me a community in which to thrive. I am a passionist. And I would like now to in, uh, introduce you or to invite each of the members of the exploratory team to um, introduce themselves. So Bob Hutz. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for many years, I knew of the Passionists, uh, but my personal encounter with Passionists came in 2010 when I began working with the team in the development office as a fundraising consultant in um, the very first and first ever province-wide campaign. Uh, this engagement um, required that I immerse myself in the spirit and works of passionists across the province. And I have continued my relationships and deepened my friendships um, with the passionist family um, for the past 11 years. So now I'm a passionist. <laughs> And Tim O'Brien. Hi, I'm Tim O'Brien, um, and I serve in a variety of ways. I've been around for a long time. I started my Passionist journey uh, with the Passionist Prep Seminary in the Eastern Province. Um, I reconnected with the Passionists in the late 90s and joined the Community of Passionist Partners Group. Since then, I've been involved in a variety of roles, uh, the director of the Community of Passionist Partners, the Office of Lay Formation, I chair the Investment Advisory Committee, um, and I am the facilitator for the Vision um, Fulfillment Commission. And I am a passionist. And Lisa Rommel. Oh, I lost this. Hi, I'm Lisa Rommel, and I've been involved with the passionists for over 30 years now. I started working here in my 20s here at the St. Vincent Strombey Community in Chicago. Um, and you'll hear more about my story later, but uh, I just feel like I have been shaped and formed in so many ways by the relationships that I've had with so many passionists that have that are currently here at St. Vincent Strombey and that have moved to the community over the years. And for me, these relationships have really helped to give voice and form to the charism that was already in my heart. And um, I'm just so grateful for that. Phil Paxton. Hi, I'm Phil Paxton. I'm uh, I, um, right now. I'm currently stationed at, at the Holy Family and uh, St. Mary's Churches in the Birmingham area. I'm on the provincial council, and uh, I am a passionist. And David Kolauer. Good afternoon. I'm David. 1985, I think it was, I read about the Passionists in a book called The 1985 Guide to Religious Ministries. And I said, well, I want to check more about that out, so I wrote a letter. 
After a few years, I entered the Passions Novitiate. It was 1988, 1989. And uh, my novice director sent me out on a communion call to a place I've never been, to a woman who's homebound. I came back from that experience kind of pumped up. I shared that experience with him and he got very excited about my excitement. And I knew at that moment I was a passionist. And not able to join us today, but very much a part of our committee and our process was Elizabeth Villardi, the retired um, administrator from Sierra Madre Retreat Center and now working with us passionists and our retreat center boards as we transition into policy governance and Joe Castro, the retired director of Hispanic ministry at Holy Name Retreat Center in Houston and continues to work with the Passionists as a consultant and, and on various special projects. Um, so I'd like to just share a little bit about how we came to be um, a committee or a commission. Um, so I'd like to begin with a, a couple of quotes from Antonio Machado, traveler, there is no path. Paths are made by walking. And from Phil Cousineau, remember to walk barefoot at least once a day. There is something about feeling the earth under your feet when you are in a strange land. Together as passionists, we left Chapter 2019, embracing the new realization that we are all visionaries. And as the calls to action identified at chapter began to unfold, we widened our gaze and began to recognize the emergence of, a new, of new styles of organic leadership throughout the province and the accompanying of the deepening of collaboration and relationship between all members of the Passionist family. And this new energy is alive and spirit driven, just as Paul Waddell shared with us. And how do we ensure that all of us, in the words of Pope Francis, become agents of a new future? The provincial and the council were keenly aware of this shifting cultural energy. And they began to notice the big in the little things. They recognized the need to examine the existing structures of the province to determine if they address our new emerging reality. And this led them to gather companions as Paul Deneo gathered companions gather companions with the invitation to serve on an exploratory commission. And the commission's task was to examine the current structures of Holy Cross province and to make recommendations at our June assembly as to what is needed to carry us forward into the future. That was in February of this past year. And once invited together, two vowed, three lay women, and three laymen, we began our journey. We walked barefoot in the Passionist story, in the Holy Cross province story. What has been, what is needed to live in the path that is emerging and to work together to achieve it. And so I, now I'd like to invite Lisha and Paul to, uh, um, and Phil, sorry, um, Lisa and Phil to share a little bit about our story. What was our journey? So, um, Lisa and Phil. Thanks, Faith. Um, so, Phil and I have been asked to share the process of the commission. And Faith just gave a great lead into a conversation Phil and I had um, after Paul Waddell's talk um, earlier today because we both realized that what we're really sharing is an unfolding of part of our passionist story. The commission story, Phil's story, my story, and the interweaving of it all into our shared story. That story that began 300 years ago with St. Paul of the Cross. 
In fact, the story of our commission, the process of our commission, is probably pretty similar to the one you might be experiencing right now as part of the Passionist family. In the midst of the visioning process, in the midst of the extraordinary times we're living in, we're all in this together. As Pope Francis says, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this story by virtue of having taken the charism into our hearts. And in this past year, we've witnessed many of the same things. We've wondered about the same things. And the question that this commission's process raised are the questions in all their promise and challenge with which we're all grappling individually in our communities. And as we heard from Father Joachim yesterday within the whole congregation. So when the members of the commission came together, we were all coming with our own stories. We we're all coming with our own experience of the, the charism, our own living of the charism, our own experience of the passionists, our own experience in Holy Cross province, um, and all those things coming together and our very participation in the visioning process and the vision fulfillment. And so, for instance, you know, my story is a story of a vowed member of the Passionist family. Uh, I met the Passionists in Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, I journeyed with the Passionists. I went into all the stages of initial formation. And then after I was ordained, I was stationed at Mata Dolorosa and Sierra Madre. And then I went to St. Mary's in Alabama and then I went to St. Paul's in Detroit, and now I'm back in Alabama. And what has happened over these, these years has been that I have had more and more opportunities to work with both the vowed and the lay members of the Passionist family. And that has really uh, taught me a lot, has really helped me grow in the charism, and has helped me prepare for, for participating in what has become our visioning process and our visioning fulfillment. Coincidentally, I started working for the St. Vincent Strombey community as a lay person at the same time that Phil was part of the community here at CTU working on his Masters of Divinity. Phil was one of the first passionists I met. I've been part of the Passionist family now for 33 years. And during that time, I've raised two sons as a single parent. I've done coursework at CTU and in addition to a master's at the University of Chicago. I've been trained in restorative justice and worked in restorative justice. I've also been active in my parish planning liturgy and developing programs. And in all that time, I never really thought there could be a larger role for me here at the Passionist than administrator. It seemed to me that there were certain things that were purview of the vowed and certain things that the lay could do. In our conversations as a commission, we talked about this kind of plexiglass separator between the vowed and the lay, the lay, sorry. And it was certainly operative in my mind. I just didn't think there was a place for my other gifts and that's just the way it was. And then all that changed when Father Don Sr invited me to join the visioning process for community life. And it changed even more when I had the courage to talk to David Horvath of the Passionist Solidarity Network, when he put out a call for people interested in social justice issues. I became a board member of the PSN and now have the great blessing of being the chair of the Laudato Sea Vision Fulfillment Team. These two things, invitation, and the grace to respond. That's what we as a commission see and as a whole Passionist family see going on all over the province and what has been set in motion by our visioning process. Maybe that's your story too, or your story to be. So now all eight of us with our diverse stories are part of this commission. And one of our first tasks was to look at what is to take a look at the structures and leadership that are already present. We saw a lot of creativity, as so many people have mentioned already. We saw people adapting to the needs of our time, the food ministry at Mater Dolorosa, 
online spiritual direction, prayer and retreats by the charism and ministry vision fulfillment teams, Laudato C, infusing principles of integral ecology across the province, a committee tasked with exploring a lay rule for passionists. We saw leadership being exercised by people from all parts of the passionist family, simply responding to needs and being empowered by provincial leadership. We saw leadership structures both in place and emerging. We saw how the relationship between vowed and lay is evolving, how the plexiglass is losing its substance. We saw what is going on and images arose of a spider plant and her babies, of new wineskins, of a spiraling vortex with a charism at the center. I think of Paul Waddell in this image of gravity, of grafted trees with extraordinary fruit. It was clear fairly quickly that what we were looking at was a movement of the spirit. We were riding the spirit. Creative leadership was already happening. People who had not previously been involved were stepping in and being invited forward. A multitude of gifts among members of the Passionist family were surfacing and being put in service of the charism. People all over the Passionist family were moving into greater engagement and new structures were already being formed of collaborative leadership and cooperative partnership. We talked about the human circulatory system, that something similar was coming into being, a system of connections and relationships whose mutual flow was bringing life to the whole and to the parts. So the question became, can we, as a commission, as a province, create a structure or mechanism to facilitate what is already happening, to support this new culture that is coming into being? Another way to put that question was to ask, how could this movement that's been going on, this movement of the spirit, visioning fulfillment, and all the things that it implied, how could it be integrated at the provincial leadership level? You know, and important questions would come up again and again and again. We were thinking, well, is this, are we being called to a structure that's totally different from, from what is right now? Or does it have some kind of continuity with what is? And how would it fit in with Canada, the prescriptions of canon law? And do we want to have a parallel structure where, where something like a lay board and, and, a, and then just parallel to the council? Or do we want to have something that actually fits in to the current structure that's more integrated, not so much separate, but integrated? You know, and, and Bob is going to share a, a, a moment some of the answers that we came to some of those questions. But we also found ourselves doing a lot of looking at bigger questions. You know, the, the commission met with the provincial council and there were questions of identity that rose up. You know, we often wrestle with the implications of what all this would mean and how all this would be. And what does it mean for us as a whole? And sometimes when we got a little too far afield, people like Bob or Elizabeth or whatever kind of bring us back to the center, you know, call us back to the task at hand. But I'd like to share with you just a little brief reflection on one of those bigger questions. And it was, and it was around identity as a vowed passionist, as a vowed member of the passionist family. You know, what does that mean going into the future? Especially in, in a kind of the new dynamic and in, 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 in the, the spirit that we're in right now, the transition moment that we're in right now. And um, I knew you know, like Father Joel had mentioned yesterday, you know, we passionists and, and we vow passionists, and when they have recognized that the charism is not ours to own or ours to control. So I, I've known that for a while. And so the question of identity is, you know, so my identity can't be caught up in, you know, separating myself from the lay members of the, of the passionist family. And so what it came to me is something akin to maybe what Paul asked in his talk. One of the questions that he asked is, what does being faithful to the story ask of me now? And for me, 
when they ask of me is something that I consider, you know, an important part of the passion's charism. That whole, when Paul Cross talks about dying to self, you know, and right, you know, and giving rise to new life. You know, what do I have to die to? I have to die to what I thought was part of my identity in order to, to have a new life as a member of the Passionist family. And so that's, that's how I've been looking at the question of my identity as a vowed Passionist. When I think about that question, what does this mean for all of us? I think we really can't know what it means for us, for all the parts of the Passionist family, that it's still unfolding, that that knowing is held in God's heart. All I think that I can do, or what I try to do, <laughs> is is trust in Jesus's gift of peace and try to see with the lens of the charism. In this moment, in whatever day-to-day -day situation I find myself, I try to ask, what is required of me right now to surrender just a little more fully to the passion of Jesus, to this most overwhelming work of God's love? Fundamentally, that's who we really are. Small pieces of this expansive love, finding each other and knowing ourselves as passions. Well, this is our story. A, a story of our commission, but a story of our promise, a story of going out. Uh, you know, when when Alyssa and I were reflecting on how we wanted to present this, we wanted to call to mind, you know, other times in Passionist history where this has happened. And, and one of the times is in the middle of the 19th century or early part where, you know, Father Anthony Testa, who is really considered the second founder of the Passionists, it was uh, under his leadership that the Passionists expanded to many different parts of the world, including the United States in 1852, it was a period of great growth and great challenges. And it seems to me that everywhere we've gone, we've had to face different challenges. We've had to learn the cultures of the places that we have entered. But at the same time that we learned different cultures, we remained true to our charism. And we just found different ways to express the charism in ways that the people where we were would understand. We found different ways to, to express the charism that would reach different people. And kind of like in this new movement, we're entering into a new culture. And again, we're having to learn the culture and the dynamics and where the people are, where we are right now. But we also trust in the charism. We also remain true to the charism. And we try to express it in ways that we can understand. So, so what, what we feel is going on now is doing something that we've always had. Venturing into someplace new and remaining true to the cares. We are passionists. Thank you. Listen, Phil, and now Bob Hutz is going to share with you the initial fruits of all of our conversations and our times. He's going to share with you a proposal. So, Bob. Thank you, Faith. From these rich and engaging weekly conversations, as well as our personal reflection times in between our weekly meetings, we present to you and invite your personal and communal discernment for an expanded understanding of province leadership. This expanded model is not entirely new as yesterday's retrospective reminded us as well as Paul's talk this morning. It is already present in local ministries and across the various visioning groups and the vision fulfillment process. It has already taken root in 
province assemblies like this or the last chapter. We were charged with exploring how that creative grassroots leadership might become embodied at the province level. While there are many practicalities to be worked out, these should not distract us from the insight that the Passionist family is growing as more and more of us are invited and respond to a greater appropriation of the charism, as Lissa shared about her experience, seeing in Paul of the Cross and the congregation a way to better understand ourselves and our world. From our discernment, we propose restructuring the Provincial Council to include lay and vowed members, women and men, who equally and together give voice to the diverse Passionist community, the Passionist family across the province, and who together discern the ministries of the province, those established and those yet unknown. This new Provincial Council would clearly respect the leadership role of the Provincial, as well as the reserved authority that governs the formation and community life of vowed Passionist brothers and priests. But it would bring to the table of Provincial leadership the experiences, hopes, and ideas of the larger Passionist family. Then, once gathered around that table, the fruits of this discernment by members of the council would return, would flow back to the lived experiences of our Passionist family across the province, across ministries. The founder of Visa Card, D. Hoke, sees the organization of the future embodied in community, a community based on a shared purpose that calls people to their highest aspirations. He calls it chaotic. That is the intersection of chaos and order, messiness and structure. This expanded and inclusive provincial council creates space that blends chaos and order to allow for innovation, creativity, and insights to emerge. This is where we can see the connections across ministries and how we might strengthen those connections through leadership structures and formation opportunities. This is where we believe province level discernment can happen. How this new entity is fashioned or who is appointed or elected is still part of the chaos, but we trust it will take shape. Something like what we read in Genesis and the formation of new life out of the chaos. And God saw that it was good. For now, it is enough to hear this proposal. We invite you to take a couple of minutes to pay attention to your own reaction to this idea. What is exciting? What is scary? What is confusing? What is hopeful? Let it swirl around in your hearts. Let it swirl around in your minds for a few moments. You may want to jot down a word or an image. And after this short reflection time, we will send you into small groups to share what is stirring in you 